This battle that you are witnessing is the last of the great battles between these two species, the Kongs and the V-Rexes. In this episode, we will uncover the causes of this conflict, as well as attempting to reveal the origins of both of these species, where they came from, and why they look like this. To come up with the best answer possible to this mystery, we will divide this episode into three sections. The first, discussing the battle terrain and why this is a critical part in explaining this rivalry, the origins of both of these species, and finally, the factors that caused this bloody conflict. Subscribe if you love hearing about monsters. Coming up, King Kong vs. V-Rex Conflict Explained. Number 1. The Arena a big factor as to why these two species had some massive beef with each other had a lot to do with the place they were living. Quick reminder that we will be discussing Peter Jackson's King Kong version of Skull Island, not the Monsterverse. These two islands were really different. This version of Skull Island didn't always look like this. It used to be a lot bigger. You see, over a span of around 1,000 years, the island slowly began to sink and is still sinking. This is because this island is on top of some treacherous rock, moving violently at times, instigating volcanic eruptions, crumbled terrain, and faults such as these chasms. This slowly but surely began to compress all fauna found in this island closer to each other, igniting a bloody evolutionary arms race within the island, bringing forth hellish creatures that made up the ranks of the volatile food chains in this biome, which were peaked by two apex species, the Kongs and the Vestatosauruses. But where did these two live exactly? Here's where things get interesting. These giant apes lived in what is known as the uplands of this island, mountainous peaks which were formed by colliding tectonic plates. Things up here were rugged, mixed with vegetation, rocks, peaks, and caverns. Precisely the type of cover that was preferred by the Kongs and their young. These are the areas where the Kongs would have been more abundant. But what about the V-Rexes? These animals lived in what is called the Lowlands. These were mostly open plains where most of the larger animals lived. This included the Brontosauruses, the Ferrucatus, Ligocristus, and the top predator, the V-Rex. This wasn't dense terrain. On the contrary, this provided the V-Rex's ample room to comfortably make its way through its territory, open areas to chase down prey after an ambush, and ample scope of vision. But we see here on our map that there is a bit of room between these two environments. These gaps are filled by dense jungles that witnessed the carnage. It is here where we will focus on later in this episode. We'll return to this in a little bit, but now it's the perfect time to discuss the origins of our first predator, the Vestatosaurus Rex. Number 2. The V-Rexes The V-Rexes of this island were the largest carnivores ever to step in this ecosystem. Being direct descendants of the T-Rex, the corporal build of this animal was already in good standing, at least from an evolutionary standpoint. It's worth mentioning that the gradual shrinking of this island did not only compact the territories of this animals, but also sparked an incremented rate of evolution for these animals. This included the V-Rex. Over time, similar tyrannosaurids would evolve to be more stockier. Their bone structure became more robust. Splayed three-toed feet and thicker leg bones allowed this new theropod to carry its immense 50-foot body through all sorts of terrain. Their skulls became a lot thicker as well. The largest and most potent the world has ever seen to date, equipped with peg-like teeth not equipped for cutting, but to piece and smash. Lastly, these animals developed hands with an additional digit to better help them hold on to large prey that they traveled with in long distances. Over time, these T-Rexes, as well as other varieties of specimens, would have made their way to this island through land bridges that would occasionally appear, leaving them stranded in this island that ironically preserved life from all eras. The hostile fauna found here and the rapid evolutionary development of the other creatures forced this T-Rex species to reproduce at a fast rate, and doing so allowed them to keep up with the creatures around them, constantly evolving until we got a more or less perfected V-Rex, the proud descendant of the Tyrant Lizard King. Before we start talking about the actual conflict against the Kongs, let's first cover their origins and what role they play in this island. 
Real quick, don't forget to subscribe to Goji Center Shorts, a new channel dedicated solely to entertainment, jump scares, horror, and monsters. Links in the description. Next segment, the Kongs. This species of giant ape is the one animal whose origins are as obscure as the island itself. In the book A Natural History of Skull Island, we find two theories that may explain where these things actually came from. Number one, the first theory states that these animals were not native to this island, but rather migrated here by the land bridges that would occasionally bridge Skull Island to a larger landmass. The arrival of these creatures would have dated back at least a few thousand years, which is relatively not a long time ago given that other animals such as the V-Rex were here for much longer. The self-inclusion of this new giant and intelligent creature would definitely stir up a few things in regards to the balance of power here. If this first theory is true, zoologists and field scientists think that these could have been a descendant of the Gigantopithecus, an ancient ape of large proportions despite closely resembling the African gorillas. Once arriving here, the surrounding hostile environments and the threatening life forms would have also triggered the further evolution of this race of giant apes, turning them into what they looked like when the events of 1933 occurred. The second theory is a bit more outlandish, and it involves the ancient civilization that used to thrive here ages ago. If you look closely, this civilization seemed to express some sort of veneration towards the Kong species, laid bare by the vast amounts of ape-shaped ruins in their architecture. This led the field scientists to believe that these apes, get ready for this, were a result of selective breeding by this civilization. Possibly as an attempt to create a sort of bioweapon for self-preservation, protection, war, etc. Whatever the case, these were revered by this civilization nonetheless. Once arriving on this island, they quickly made their home in the said uplands of this island, only one environment away from where the adult V-Rexes thrived. It is here where most of the conflict occurred between these two monstrous creatures. Now is the time to find out why. Number 3. The Conflict The boring answer is that these are two big animals that would inevitably notice each other in overlapping territory and duke it out until one species dies off or decides to retreat. But the truth is actually a bit more deep and violent. This jungle environment was thick and provided the perfect cover for both V-Rexes and Kongs. These V-Rexes were a lot more agile than their predecessors, thanks to a larger gap between the ribs and hips which allowed them to almost snake through the dense jungle and around other hard obstacles. The Kongs would leverage the tall vegetation to take the fight in an additional axis, attacking from above as well. The adult form of a V-Rex would avoid living here full-time for this particular reason, to prevent constant confrontations between Kongs and Rexes. But this was a better habitat for their young. That's right, an adult female V-Rex would never lay her eggs in the open lowlands, but rather put them under the cover of dense trees. These smaller offspring would then join forces with other infant V-Rexes and work together as a team. They were often safer here in larger numbers, except for when an adult Kong would wander by and run into these smaller V-Rexes. Why is this Kong here? Precisely for this reason. That's right, now we are starting to understand why jungles were battlegrounds for these beasts. Both adult V-Rexes and Kongs viewed each other's offspring as a threat, best extinguished when they are still young. Except the V-Rexes took this a bit further and also saw the younger Kongs as a source of food. This would in turn cause the adult Kongs to occasionally wander these jungles in the lookout for these large V-Rexes who looked to kill and eat their young. But why would a V-Rex even take the risk to wander into Kong territory? It's because the risk was usually outweighed by the benefits. The risk of coming into the Kong territory was potentially getting critically injured and killed in some cases. The pros of doing this is not only finding food, but also eliminating a threat that might come and kill them in the future. During the early stages of this conflict, it was mentioned that not all of these encounters would end in death. Similar to present-day confrontations between large animals, these conflicts would most of the time end with one or both animals backing off to live another day. But over time, as the island became smaller and territory became more scarce for the upcoming V-Rex generations, these animals had absolutely no choice but to fight to the death in some cases, slowly dwindling the numbers on both sides. 
So, in the end, who would eventually win this long feud? We're about to find out. Two apex species, one giant relentless group of reptiles with weapons with the purpose to crush and destroy. Another highly intelligent and immensely powerful group of apes, agile and highly temperamental. Who would end up winning? Even though both sides were strong and to some degree evenly matched, there was a factor that ended up causing the inevitable demise for one of these species. We're talking about the Kongs. The outcome of this conflict wasn't really determined on how strong or intelligent these creatures were, but was rather determined by a factor of population. That's right, this was a battle of attrition. As mentioned earlier, V-Rexes would breed abundantly, often laying many eggs at a time on a more frequent basis. Similar to the big apes in the real world, these would not mate as often, so for every one new Kong that was born, there were probably another dozen V-Rexes that would hatch. Even if we account for the V-Rexes that would not survive to adulthood, the number still was in favor of the V-Rexes. In the book Natural History of Skull Island, it is mentioned that apart from casualties inflicted by V-Rexes and infant Kongs to predators, disease was also a factor here. Skull Island was not only home to an infinite amount of deadly animals, but also disease, some of which would even take a toll on the Kong species. The vast disparity in population between these two species would only mean that a single loss of a Kong specimen would be proportionally a greater loss to the Kongs, whereas a few dead V-Rexes would be an insignificant blow to the overall V-Rex population. Eventually, over time, the casualties inflicted on both sides would catch up to the Kongs. Unfortunately, their reproductive rate would not be enough to keep their species alive on this island, which is why this group of apes was rendered down to a single specimen. King Kong, the last of his kind. Being the last of his kind meant that he had to learn to fend off every single threat on his own, forcing it to evolve physically, mentally, and emotionally. Kong's body was a living testament of what his life was all about. The scarring speaks to all the hardships he had to endure, the animals he had to kill just so that he himself could live another day. This battle was the last between their kind, never to be seen again. Had the Kongs been able to reproduce faster, this species would have thrived perhaps for another millennia. But no matter the outcome, this species would have forever been etched in the history of this island.